Hello, everybody. It is D and Renee, and we are here with Low Carb Cooking. And um, today we're going to be talking about cabbage. D and uh, has uh, come up with all these great recipes. And when you type in recipe, Hello, we are going to and be Renee, able. And we are here with Low Carb. So when you type in the word recipe, you are going to be able to get them in your Facebook Messenger. So wherever you are watching from, please tell us, say hello, tell us what city you're from. If you have a special vegetable that you would like to hear about, tell us what that is and we will create recipes around that veggie. Okay, so D, I know you've been cooking up a storm lately. Tell us a little bit about the cabbage and uh, some of the recipes that you've created. We'll, we'll get started here. So cabbage, of course, is the universal, economic, hearty vegetable found in grocery stores year round. Um, pictured is the most common green variety that we're familiar with. You'll see it in a bright, deep purple. You will see the Chinese versions of it with Savoy and Napa. And for any recipe that I have created or used with cabbage, I can guarantee you there's probably 50 more circulating out there. Very, very similar. Cabbage is such a common ingredient in almost any roast vegetable recipe, lazy man cabbage rolls, cabbage rolls, cabbage soup, everybody's been on a cabbage diet or the cabbage uh, soup diet. Um, those have been circulating, I think, for 60, 70 years. Um, a really, just a really great um, staple vegetable. Um, one of the beautiful things about cabbage is, is that it's extremely tough so that you can, um, watch you know chop it and store it in your fridge and it will stay fresh for up to two weeks in a sealed bag so for those last minute meals when you just you're not sure what to do or you're in a real big hurry throw a couple of cups of that in a saute pan add almost any seasoning that you like and voila you have a perfect side to any protein um so let's uh let's explore cabbage a little bit more to just see how user friendly it really is all right, so um, I see here uh, we've got the cabbage rolls. So remember, if you are watching us live or even in the replay, all you have to do is type in the word recipe and your Facebook Messenger is going to send you all of these fantastic recipes. So this looks really like a great dinner. Is this easy to do? Is it user friendly for people like me that don't really cook? It sure, it, it actually is super easy. So anybody that is familiar with the protocol or just even um, familiar with good old um, cabbage rolls, because again, I think I say this every show, but I'm sure that everybody's mother, grandmother, aunt, father, their heritage probably has a version of cabbage rolls. Um, so when it comes to the cabbage roll, the, the trickiest part actually is in your leaf prep because you need to make that leaf just, you know, soft, bendable, pliable to roll. So the easiest way to do that, um, in my experience, is, is immersing it in the pot of boiling water. 10, 15 minutes till the leaves start coming apart. And then you remove them and put them in a cold water bath to stop the cooking process because we don't want them mushy. We just want them pliable enough to roll. So you remove the hardcore part of the stem. And so often in the bottom of a big leaf, you'll see that kind of triangular vein. You might need to just snip those out a little bit to make the rolling easier. However, I also want to touch note on some um, recipes will say that you can steam the, steam the cauliflower, oh gosh, steam the cabbage in the microwave. I, I tend to shy away from that method, um, but a really neat one that I recently discovered was is that you place the whole head of cabbage in your deep freeze for up to 48 hours. Then you take it out, let it naturally thaw on the counter, and the leaves are in the same pliable form as if you would have done the boiling water bath and then immersing in cold water. So that is really that is the most part of your prep now you can do that and have them made ahead cabbage rolls freeze beautifully so you can make multiple batches 
The filling in this pictured cabbage roll is extra lean ground beef, and in the place of rice, we use, of course, cauliflower. So a lot of people on protocol are very familiar with cauliflower rice, and my main herb or ingredient in this um, cabbage roll is dill. Um, fresh dill. I really, really loved it paired with the, the cauliflower rice and the extra lean ground beef. Um, you also have options for your tomato sauce. So you can simply buy Italian herbed spiced um, tomatoes in a can, no added sugar, perfectly acceptable, or you can fresh chop your own Roma tomatoes or beef steak tomatoes, whatever choice of tomatoes you like, and add the Italian seasonings to it to make your own tomato sauce. And so the recipe pictured, that is two eight ounce servings of protein, and then each serving of that protein contains two cups of your vegetables. So you either have two dinners for um, two days or enough to share with your family or maybe even another member that may be on protocol with you. You could easily double, triple, quadruple the recipe again and feed your whole family. I love that. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that I always tell my clients and, and, you know, cause not everybody eats red meat mm -hmm. is it's very simple to get ground chicken breast. So, um, chicken breast is going to be a leaner cut of meat than, um, you know, your dark meats. And, uh, certainly that's what we're going for on the ideal protein phase one protocol. So you can just either have your butcher grind it up. So I'll do like um, gr ground uh, chicken breast or ground turkey breast. And I'm sure it would be very similar in taste and be just a little bit leaner. Yeah, absolutely. Another, oh. another tip on using even extra lean ground beef, you can pre-scramble fry your beef even before making something like the cabbage roll filling if you wanted to remove extra fat. Then you simply just rinse, rinse it underneath um, cool water to remove the fat and put it back in the pan. So if you're, if you're, if you're worried about fat, um, I, I, I was raised on a, on a cattle farm, so I'm kind of pro beef. <laughs> <laughs> so pardon so so but Renee like excellent tip yeah ground chicken ground turkey um you know look for ground turkey breast sometimes those packages of ground turkey um they contain all the parts of the turkey um it is not the you know the the nice white um lean breast meat as well so just a little bit of product knowledge there yeah for sure you know one one of the things that I I realized early on was, you know, I would have some clients that ate a lot of turkey burger and they were buying, you know, just whatever was at the grocery store, Jenny O or whatever. And, and realizing that that is not turkey breast, even though it says it's super lean, it's actually like 40% fat. So it, it would actually slow my clients down. So, you know, we got to the point where we would just choose a uh, chicken breast or turkey breast. So you can do that. Um, you know, I live in the, the land of, of vegan America. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm cognizant of a lot of different diets uh, where, where we come from. And we have a lot of vegetarian clients um, and we have a whole list of vegetarian proteins. So I'm not sure how that would incorporate with cabbage rolls. Um, but I'm going to make these because I have yet to ever have a cabbage roll. <laughs> So if you are on this call and um, if you're watching us live, if you're watching us in the in the replay, say hello and tell us where you're from. Um, it looks like we've got Lisa here and she says it looks delicious. Thanks for uh, checking in with us, Lisa. So tell us where you're from. We know you're out there. Um, if you're interested in the recipes, be sure to type in the word recipe and Facebook Messenger will automatically send them to you. All right, Dee, let's see what we have up next. Um, I was noticing quite a few of the things um, in this broadcast are salad oriented, which is perfect for summer. As, as we get into summer, we want to eat cooler things, things that are lighter and, uh, not, you know, not necessarily cooked things, easy, salady, cool things. So, um, yeah, tell us about your, um, is this, what salad is this? This is the Japanese cabbage salad. 
Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with this one, but this is a salad that's really, really been popular in the last 10 years. You find it at potlucks, um, you know, weddings, celebrations, those types of things in um, when you have big gatherings and, you know, when you're going to the assembly line of food, um, Japanese cabbage salad often presents itself. And in its original form, you take a really healthy salad with some with some healthy seeds in it, and then you put horrible fried noodles. <laughs> so um, very um, uh, nutrient deficient and just full of fat. But of course, they give that traditional salad really good crunch and texture. So I simply um, removed those noodles. And if you like, as an option, you could um, pan fry dry some zero noodles or some kelp noodles, some calorie carb, fat free noodles, um, if you want that texture. And of course, our trail mix makes a perfect substitution for the sunflower seeds that are in the original salad and <clears throat> substituted into this Japanese cabbage salad. Um, you touched on a great point on a lot of these recipes are salads. So again, that goes back to the ease of just having that shredded or chopped salad, uh, cabbage um, in your fridge. It lasts a ridiculously long time. It's very economical. And no matter what you're dreaming up of, it's there ready to go. And so it can be done so fast. So this one simply has fresh mushrooms, green onions, um, sprouts, bean sprouts, and then you make a little sauce for it. Um, there is... Um, this recipe works best if you buy sugar-free um, actual the chicken bouillon powder or cubes. Now, in Canada, Epicure sell, sells a brand that has a really clean label, and you can just add a little bit of your own salt on it. So that is the, my, my only warning on this recipe is um, make sure the chicken bouillon powder or if you bust up a little chicken cube that you're using one that is carb-free, sugar-free. A lot of them have really poor um, nutrient panels on, so you might have to just do a little bit of homework to find that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, you know, um, I don't know what what markets you have up there, but we uh, over in California and actually throughout the United States, uh, Whole Foods is is a really big chain of of uh, grocery stores in the same way with Trader Joe's and, you know, just having better nutrition. But as we learn on phase one, we have to start reading our labels. Um, last night we did a cooking class at my clinic and you know, we were talking about how most of the chicken broth that you use, if you buy the brands, the only brand is Imagine that doesn't have cane sugar added to it. So understanding that your spice mixes, even, you know, lemon pepper mix or what have you, there's so many things that have sugar in them and it's crazy. And, you know, we, we just think of it as, oh, geez, this is an herb or I'm buying spices, but um, actually, you know, lots of of things with sugar in them. All right. So if you are live on this broadcast, please tell us where you're from. And if you have questions or you have a specific veggie that you'd love to hear about, let us know what that is. If you'd like the recipes from today's broadcast, all you have to do is type in recipe. Okay, D, let's see what we got next. Oh, this looks amazing. Pasta salad. We've been, at, you know what, honestly, since we've been doing these broadcasts, our rotini has been flying off the shelf at, at our clinic. In fact, we ran out this week. <laughs> it, you know, I really feel like the rotini is a great product that some, it, somewhere along the way got a little bit of a bad rap. Um, Often when we are, are changing our eating habits and changing our lifestyle, you know, we're just, we're just used to large amounts of food that just really don't have a lot of nutrition value. And, and, and pasta does fall into that in that category. They enrich it with its vitamins. It's not like it's naturally containing um, a boatload of wonderful things for our body. So, however, those little rotini noodles done by IP, they're great for holding dressing. They're great for holding sauces. Um, I, I And I know I tell you guys this every time, but you know what? Simply soak your rotini in water on the counter till they're al dente and then drain them. Let them dry or pat them dry when you use them in a salad like this. And again, 
The different flavors of cabbage in this salad pair really nicely with the rotini noodles. It is something that you can make ahead. You could have seven salads made for lunch every single day um, of the week for work um, or even a mid-afternoon snack, depending on where you where you need to uh, how you journal and how you design your food day. Um, it's uh, and the and the possibilities for pasta salad are endless. But again, the different flavors of cabbage meld really nicely with the rotinis. It's a really sturdy salad. And I obviously I actually enjoyed that salad outside under the sun um, with my mango steam water there. So <laughs> it's just I and love it's so, it. so simple, so yeah. fast. So, Good food does not have to be fancy, um, and it does not have to take a long, long time to prepare. True, mm -hmm. true. But, yeah. So, so one of the things though that I was, uh, I asked you one time um, how long you soak your noodles. You soak them for a long time before they become al dente. Tell everybody how long that is. Well, so the great part about if you forget about them, they could be soaking on the counter for two hours and they won't be mushy. So. <laughs> the rotini noodles are tougher than the mac and cheese noodles, just so you know that. So you can oh, walk. Okay. Yeah. So they you take longer. Do they? Well, they just the rotini, the mac and cheese will, you know, start to break down, maybe kind of break apart if you leave them too long. But one of the biggest complaints that I hear about IP pasta is it's the texture. Um, and so if you overcook pasta, even regular pasta, it's a terrible texture. It's it's. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not good either. And so I suspect that a lot of times the pasta is actually being over-prepared. So I err on the side of under-preparing and it's a lot easier if you just soak it on the counter um, to do that. And then, you know, you can walk by and stick your fingers in the dish and give it a little squish squish to see, you know, where, where you like it and, and pull it at that time. You might only soak it for half an hour and say, hey, that's great. You might do it for two hours and say, wow, it's still good and it's not destroyed. So Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, good. So you're going to have to kind of uh, play with it or you can boil it yourself too, if you want to. Uh, most of my clients say this uh, rotini takes about 15 to 18 minutes, um, you know, to, to get it where they like it. It's definitely not nine minutes like regular pasta. Um, all right. So uh, tell us where you're from. We've got a couple people online here. We've got Lisa from Buffalo and M, I think M is from your area, right? M is from our clinic. And we're oh, just, right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll, we'll just give a little shout out to M because I know her personally. Um, awesome. We gave a challenge this week in our clinic and M rocked it. And she was the the win winner of a, of a prize pack. And um, wow. she's doing fantastic on phase one. So good shout out. Uh, that's that is so wonderful yeah if you um have a um non-scale victory or a scale victory share it with us and and uh tell us how you're doing and uh you know let us know any of your questions also one of the things that you want to do is subscribe to d's recipes and that's a private group when we're done here i will put a link to uh, D's group, but you're going to, not only are you going to get recipes that are shareable, printable, you're also going to get really great coaching because all of the top coaches are in that group. So one of the things that I find out there on the web is, you know, a lot of information that's not a hundred percent protocol. So if you really want good coaching along with you know, just being able to ask questions, get recipes, just go to D's recipe group and, and there's no confusion on protocol there. All righty. So we uh, want to say hi to Mindy over in Omaha. Nice to, to of you to join us. If you want these recipes, all you have to do is type the word recipe and you're going to get them in your Facebook Messenger. All right, D. So let's see what we got here. This looks scrumptious, too. Um, again, summer salad. So I like to call this one just like a garden market salad. So think of, you know, there's lots of farmers. Well, they call them farmers markets here. What do you guys, what do you call them yeah. in California? Farmers yeah. uh -huh. um, it, in, and everybody is, um, have stands full of wonderful fresh produce. Um, and of course, these are just all simple. These are simple ingredients that are available all year round. 
but tend to be exceptionally vibrant in color and flavor at this time of the year. And your celery and your radish that you see in there, those are unlimited veggies. So you don't even, you, they can be extra. You don't even have to count them um, in the base part of your salad or your recipe. I love the color of purple cabbage. I cannot speak enough to purple, the color of purple cabbage. Purple cabbage gives salads personality. So when even a few tablespoons of purple cabbage on top of a salad is garnish, often in, in nice eating establishments, you will see that. And it's very eye appealing. It breaks up your plate. It actually makes you feel like you're having more than um, what's on there. And it has a very sturdy, crunchy texture. It is the sturdiest of the cabbage varieties um, that you will try. So, and it literally will turn other things purple. So <laughs> as in your food and your mm -hmm others <laughs> you're, you're so if, if, if purple's your favorite color <laughs> there you go yeah. <laughs> all right let's say hi to patty here and <laughs> again uh if if uh she's from holdridge nebraska we got a lot in nebraska lately cool. um all right um so if you are interested in these recipes just type in the word recipe Okay, D, let's see what we got up next. All right, another salad. So one of the things that, um, like I said, we had a cooking class last night and they, uh, the chef there was talking about eating seasonally. So just like D was talking about going to your farmer's market, the things that are seasonal are the way that we really should be eating. So, you know, you're eating lighter things for summer, things that are filled with water and hydration. Those are your summer vegetables. And then we go into fall and winter and spring. Spring are detox veggies. Uh, winter are more like savory things that, you know, warm us up from the inside. And so um, just, you know, eating seasonally, learning to cook seasonal vegetables um, is really, you know, important and obviously eating organic veggies. Um, so tell us about this oriental salad, Dee. So this one actually was just done out of the simple fact is that I'm, again, going to give the Ideal Protein, the oriental sesame sauce, um, a little bit of a plug here because that and coupled with ingredients that are in that sauce, so a little extra rags aminos, you could use lemon and lime, vinegar, so on and so forth, you bulk up a tablespoon serving of that dressing and simply um, drizzle over. In this one, I often do three to four different kinds of cabbage. So I like to have my Napa cabbage, my Savoy cabbage, and then regular green cabbage and purple cabbage. All diced and sliced and in a bag ready to go. You can stir fry it really quick, flash in the pan, just to make them a little bit tender before you um, season and sauce them, or you can just enjoy it raw. Um, and again, on top there, those are, we, we carry um, konjac noodles in our clinic, and they are zero carb, zero fat um, root noodle. And a little bit of that goes a long, long way for texture too. So maybe you're not using those in phase one, but maybe for phase, you know, four, um, they're a great addition and they actually hold the sauce well and just add some nice texture and crunch into those cabbages. Um, this is a type of a cabbage dish that I will throw together over and over and, and over again, just simply out of, I need a fast lunch or I need a fast side um, with my supper. And um, and again, I'm going to say this again. I know I've already said it. You go buy four little heads of cabbage. You chop those up and you measure how many cups of veggies you are going to get out of that. You are going to be eating for a long time. Um, so you also may put them in some Ziplocs or sealable containers and, and freeze your shredded cabbage as well. Because um, there's a lot of ideas that we're not even going to get here today. Um, you know, I didn't show you soups. I didn't show you crack slaws. There's about 50 different versions of those out there. You can simply roast cabbage steaks. You know, there's just so, so many things you can do with any type of cabbage. You can barbecue cabbage. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what do you put yeah. on barbecued cabbage? 
Do you know what you know what I'm going to tell you on barbecued cabbage? You cut them into steaks like the same thickness as you would actually barbecue a steak and you simply grill them whole. And then once they're tender, you remove them and then brush your olive oil and seasoning of choice mm. on them. You that don't need to mm -hmm. you don't need to pre-season or pre-oil your vegetables when roasting them. And actually you lose a lot of the um bioavailability of your oil like you break it down it's and, and you actually lose like if you're like there's so many wonderful gourmet olive oils out there that mm -hmm. are protocol friendly um, but in the cooking process you're going to destroy a lot of those flavors so we want to retain those flavors so simply roast your vegetables plain as is and then once you remove from the heat that's when you brush and spice and once you brush with your oil then you add your spices and it will it will seep into your warm roasted veggie. Wow, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not even on our list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's say hi to Patty. Or may, I think we said hi to Patty. We're going to say hi to Patty twice today. Okay. Um, all right, so if you are on here, tell us where you're from. Tell us any victories that you've had this week. Tell us what your challenges are. And if there's a certain veggie you would like to hear about, let us know and we will create recipes for that. All right, Dee. Last but not least. <laughs> there's my purple cabbage again. So this can we do it twice. A, this is a different salad though, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. this, this is actually my version of um, one of the many crack slaws out there. So when you are looking at crack slaws um, ingredient lists, a lot of the sauce ingredients they're going to be really similar. You're going to see you're going to see a sweetener. You're going to see either sriracha or hot sauce. You're going to see Bragg's amino. If you see the word soy sauce, please please consider. I'm switching to a carb-free tamari sauce or look for Bragg's Amino, which is a true zero, zero product. Um, soy sauce has carbs and a lot of them have sugar. And so just to, you know, ease of mind that you're, you're consuming things that are protocol friendly, just look for those products instead. It makes it a lot easier on you. Um, Sugar-free sriracha, if you can't find one pre-made, it's really easy to make your own. Um, salt, pepper, garlic, ginger, those types of ingredients. So the same uh, melt here for this. I, again, like the purple cabbage because it's so sturdy. And this one is actually, it used pork tenderloin. So if I buy a nice clean cut of pork, I actually prefer um, pork tenderloin uh, just because it is so lean and you can, you can cut it with a butter knife. And um, most times, if you buy a good cut, you'd actually think you're eating chicken. That's how, how mild it is. Um, it cooks really quick. Um, it is the um, other white meat. You've all heard that slogan um, time and time again. And, and if your tummy can tolerate it, absolutely a great choice for phase one. And uh, this one is real simple. Purple cabbage, a little bit of green onion. And I know there's a kind of another theme going on here today, and I'm kind of laughing at myself, but those actually have kelp noodles in them. And I don't know if you've ever tried kelp noodles. I think they're the bomb. They have nothing in them. They have no calories. They have no carbs. They have nothing in them. Um, and yeah, it's seaweed. It's seaweed, but it's like zero, zero, zero. They're crystal clear like glass, and they literally take on all the color of the purple cabbage, and it just it's just such a fantastic um, texture in with that cabbage. And I'm telling you, I use them probably just strictly for the visual appeal of the purple noodles, just because I think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a kelp noodle is that going to be like? Does it does it have the body of a noodle, or is it more like a bamboo sprout? Like, what is it like? It looks like clear tapeworms. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. What does it taste like, Dee? <laughs> you know, they're really interesting. I shouldn't say that. They're fur. They're not because they're they're clear actually. So I'm I'm okay. giving wrong analogies. I I'm listening. I'm listening to too many um, client feedbacks with their funny faces. No, um, they're they're clear. They look like crystal clear glass. They look like noodles. They look like real noodles, and they are firm like they are really really firm and sturdy yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emma, i was going to ask about the glowing noodles yeah 
They're so cool. So we get them in um, from time to time. And again, they are a true zero zero. It's a seaweed. Uh, kelp is your is your seaweed. And I know that question comes up a lot when we're doing recipes. Can I have seaweed? Well, you can't have the ones that are flavored with oil and have added carbs and extras in it. But you sure can use zero 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 seaweed. So that's what's in that particular crack slot. Now, crack slot, the reason why I chose to show this one is, is because in my own recipe collection or on our own sharing page, when I post crack slot, they actually all look the same, <laughs> even if there's a little bit of, um, so here's a good tip again. And so Renee talked, touched on it in the very first recipe, crack slaw can be made with ground pork, ground lean ground pork. So again, like something like tenderloin, your ground chicken, your ground turkey, your ground beef, there is not a wrong, a wrong protein choice to pair um, with crack slaws. And then the dressings, you know, they're all so, I've seen so many, but they are really, really very similar. Um, so again, just know that, be a little bit of an experimenter. So you all heard the word season to taste. And what I like, you might not like. So maybe you make my base recipe and you say, Ooh, like too much lime or too much soy or too much ginger or garlic or so on. Or maybe you go, hey, that's not enough. That's really wimpy. Like, let's sauce this up. So things like sriracha sauce or hot sauce or Tabasco sauce, those kind of things are freebies in your world. And feel free to add more as garnish or in the base recipes. So even though we are giving you base recipe options, I really encourage you to take them and make them your own. So if you see that and you say, oh, that looks kind of okay, I would do this, do it. Do it, make it, post it, make it your own, turn it into something you really, you really love. These are just ideas. This isn't the only way that I, I expect you or want you to make things, so. Absolutely. There's a, a bazillion ways to make cracks law. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to say hello. Uh, Melissa is apparently not feeling well. So <laughs> Melissa is uh, the owner of Red Cliff Pharma Save along with her husband, Rob, and um, Dee uh, works for them and is one of the coaches there. And um, she's also a recipe creator, obviously. Um, so, so hi, Melissa. She says that they used to carry the noodles, but they don't have them right now. Um, okay. Well, I got to check out the kelp noodles because I actually love seaweed. So, um, and, and seaweed is so good for you on so many, many levels of all the nutrients, um, you know, that, that we need. And, and some of the things that, you know, when you first start phase one, you're going like, I haven't eaten vegetables or I don't like vegetables or, you know, there's so many, I get so many different, different, uh, excuses about how they don't want to eat their vegetables. But, you know, you get a month down the road, two months down the road, and boom, everybody is like, oh, yeah, I really, you know, I've really learned to like my vegetables. And last night we actually did a cooking class just on seasonal vegetables for the summer, and we made these amazing plates filled with heirloom tomatoes, and uh, we had zucchini and oh my gosh, kale and everything. It was amazing and, and done in all different ways. Some things were sauteed, some things were fresh and raw. And really, there's so many great flavors out there. You can pretty much recreate all of the recipes that are your traditional home mm -hmm. recipes and um, find savory things that your grandma used to cook or your mom cooked and recreate them as protocol. Um, and then, you know, as you move out into different phases, you can, you know, add things here and there like healthy fats and, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So if you're on this show um, and you're watching live or in the replay, all you have to do is type in the word replay. I mean, uh, recipe and you will get the recipes. Um, Dee, do you have a few more words about cabbage or protocol? Um, oh, look who's online. Amanda. Amanda, how are you? I haven't met Amanda yet, but she uh, is the leader of the uh, ideal support group that has like 50,000 people in it. Um, Amanda, we should do a live one of these days. 
Um, okay, D, do you um, have some, any more words about cabbage or protocol, words of wisdom? Sure, so let's just, I wanted to just touch on your, your telling us about your, your cooking last night, the demonstration that you had. So one thing that protocol users often as coaches in clinics, we hear they come back and they said, oh, I'm so sick of salad or I'm, I can't look at another salad. And and then so we got to talk. We got to explore a little more. We got to look at your journal because you know what? You shouldn't just be eating salad. Salad is a is a freebie extra. We, we want you to eat salad on top of four cups of select veggies and maybe a few of those occasional veggies a week. So this is a great place to start building your veggie repertoire. You know what? So if you're always, you know, if you're thinking that vegetable eating just means salad, we want to help you turn that around. We want to give you 50 other options and then add salad on top of that. Or if you're going to have a little bit of salad, let's put some beautiful purple cabbage in there. Let's put some fresh zucchini in there. Those heirloom tomatoes. Heirloom tomatoes are gorgeous. If you guys have not, not seen the wonderful varieties of heirloom tomatoes, and honestly, something like tomatoes, if you had a, 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 a snacking addiction, try adding cherry tomatoes to your protocol use. Just remember that they are occasional, maximum four cups a week of occasional veggies, but really use them, put them in there, start putting them up to, to good use, you know? Have bags of chopped and shredded um, cabbage. Coleslaw, I mean, who hasn't heard of coleslaw? And they use coleslaw inside at most eating establishment for all types of different dishes. You can make creamy based ones, you can make vinegar based dressings, like the sky, like, we, there's just so many uses for, for cabbage in every variety. And yeah, I just, um, I know it's, the word cabbage isn't really exciting, but you can make really exciting things with it. And I grew, I grew up with a Slovak Baba. So she was, Baba means grandma. And in Slovak, uh, cabbage is called kapusta. <laughs> well, kapusta. So <laughs> that's just a fun little little tidbit from um, uh, background of your heritage. So you know what? Let us know what type of dishes that you grew up with using cabbage, what you were exposed to, what, you know, what are some favorites? Maybe you have some old favorites and, and you need some help redesigning them. Let us help you and then and then share it with everybody. Yeah, that's, those are great. Yeah, great ideas. All right, everybody, we have come to the end of our time. We've actually exceeded our time as as, as we, we can barely get done what we want to do in 30 minutes. But <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us. And again, if you want these recipes, type in the word recipe and they will be sent to your Facebook messenger. And Dee, thank you as always for joining me and giving us such creative inspiring things to cook this week. Renee, as always, I thank you for being so generous with your time and your sharing with everybody. It really, this is just such a fun um, vehicle of sharing and just a big shout out to you to just, you know, to let everybody know that you're very generous in giving of your time. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Bye. We will see you soon. See you next Wednesday. Bye.